know, didn't accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their Messiah. So, you know, they don't embrace the idea of the Trinitarian nature of God uh, as we do. So if, if you don't believe, you know, what's, what's the problem if you don't believe in, in the Trinity? Well, if you don't believe the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then you can't trust in his death as the payment for your sins. Your sins aren't paid for. You don't have a Savior. Because it took God to die in the place of all men for sins to be atoned, to be redeemed, to be propitiated, uh, requires Christ to be God, holy God. Uh, if, if you will, turn with me to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God... And one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So the verse, it starts out, verse 4, for there is, uh, I'm sorry, verse 3, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. So there you have strong testimony that the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, is God. And the verse in the passage goes on to say, uh, verse 5, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Um, turn, if you will, to Galatians chapter 3, verse 20. Um, Galatians 3.20 is not the reference that I wanted. Um, sorry. Um, and for time's sake, I'd like you to go with me to second. Uh, hang on just a second. Bear with me. Uh, there's The reference I was looking for is, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I know what I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in 2.20. I'm Looking at the wrong reference. <laughs> that, yeah, great verse, Galatians 3.20. <laughs> I'm not nervous, no. Um, and then 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. Now to him that, it, uh, uh, for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The Lord Jesus Christ is our mediator, and... And as Galatians 3.20 says, now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So the, the concept, is he, is God three persons? Yes. Can Christ then, being one of the Godhead, mediate the Godhead and man if he is God? And so that's what the verse is saying. A mediator is not a mediator of one. Um, how can I mediate between myself and somebody else if if there's a a break in our relationship how can i come and be the mediator between the two of us and that's what the verse is so so the thing about god that's so hard to understand is he is three persons but over and over he's spoken of as one in the in the scriptures and that's just something we need to believe take by faith and uh, we're going to try to look at some references to give some support for that um, but uh, Romans chapter 1 now, if you'll go there with me. Um, and as you go there, uh, I want you to also get Mark chapter 12. And I'm going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6, and Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. Now, there, there's a lot of Old Testament evidence about the triune God, the, the Trinity, uh, the, um, to give evidence that God is one God yet in three persons. And this is one of those passages uh, 
in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, that, that speak to the oneness of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And one Lord, Lord is capital L-O-R-D. And when you see that in your Bible, all caps, L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's a reference to that word translated there is Jehovah. And uh, Jehovah there uh, is the, pre, uh, the self-existent uh, eternal God. Uh, so that verse says Jehovah, God, is one God. And uh, Mark chapter 12, uh, in Mark 12, a scribe asks a question of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he quotes, uh, he quotes um, Deuteronomy chapter 6 to answer the question. Mark 12, verse 28. And they, and uh, so again, in, in, or in verse 27, the context, uh, there came to him chief priests and scribes and the elders, and they say unto him, by what authority dost thou, uh, dost thou do these things? And who gave the authority uh, to do these things? Um, and, um, and then in chapter 12, uh, <laughs> in verse 28, And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all, the commandments, is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. So he says in verse 29, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The, the fact that we have the triune nature of God, the Trinity, isn't just a New Testament doctrine. The Lord Jesus Christ is, of course, presented in the New Testament scriptures, Matthew, or through Revelation, and there's a lot of information about the Lord Jesus Christ's earthly ministry, his revelations to Paul, but in the Old Testament, we normally see, or we mainly see Jehovah represented in the Old Testament. So again, those who have problems with the doctrine of the Trinity uh, tend to do so because the Old Testament is so strong with their presentation of Jehovah, the one God. Uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ in this, past, in this passage says the, the, the number one, you know, the, the verse, uh, the first commandment of all is that the Lord our God is one Lord, quoting uh, Deuteronomy 6.4. Um, so it's an Old Testament Doctrine that, uh, and uh, we're going to look at some passages that show the support of the fact that God is not just one, but He's also three persons, uh, as supported by the verses in the Old Testament. Now, before we go back there, I want you to go to Romans chapter one and look at verse twenty with me. Romans one, verse twenty. Ted went here last night. Romans one making a great case for the fact that uh, the world's attitude toward God, the rebellion, isn't unique just to this dispensation of grace. And Paul is dealing, he's explaining in Romans 1 to the Gentiles that God is just to pour out his wrath against all men. And in the process, in verse 20, he makes the case, he says, starts in, let's start in verse 19, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and so forth. Now, when they knew God, in time past, before the Tower of Babel, uh, when God gave up on the nations, gave them up to walk in their own ways, and in verse 20, it says, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead. 
The word Trinity doesn't appear in the Bible, but the word Godhead does. It appears about three times in the Bible. And here, it's a reference to the Godhead, and it says that the, the, the invisible things of God can be understood by the things that are made. Now, not the fact that he is a triune God, naturally. We can't see that in creation. But we're going to look at the fact that the creation itself is referred to by many scriptures as evidence that God is. And, and we'll see that all three persons of the Godhead were involved with the creation. So his eternal power and Godhead, that he is God, that he is all-powerful, that can be understood by looking at creation. And we can look at creation and we can, we can learn a lot of things about God. Um, we can know by observing the things that are around us that God's created that it took su- uh, superior or supernatural intelligence to create this world and this universe that we live in. Okay, so there's, there's no question when we look at creation, God is. Uh, we can uh, look around and we see that God is the giver of life. Only God can give life. No other, you know, his, uh, Satan claims to have power, but he can't, he's never been able to create life. Whenever the, uh, uh, the, when God used Moses to show the gods in Egypt that he was the only God, he took time to go through a process of, of showing that all of Egypt's major gods were powerless and that he is only the author of life. He could make life that would overwhelm the, you know, the, the uh, ten plagues and what went on there. So God is the, we look at creation and know that God is the giver of life and that he's good. We look at the creation we live in and not only is it suited for our basic needs, but for so much more. And we don't have time to go into all of the manifestations, how creation is super, uh, God is just super gracious to us in his creation to provide the comfort and the beauty and the diverse kinds of food and resources and all the things that he's put into. And this planet, different from any other planet that we can see, you know, as far as we can see with our most powerful telescope. So uh, creation reveals some things about God, his order, that God is a God of order and balance, that he's dependable. You know, does the sun usually come up in the morning? And does a day normally last until the, the, day ri- the, the sunrise and sunset? Is it normally pretty reliable? God is dependable, and, he's, uh, and he can be trusted. So many things can be learned about God just from observing creation. But, uh, you know, when we want to know the deep things of God, we need his word to reveal who he is. Uh, Psalms chapter 19, verse 1 Uh, You're familiar with Psalm 19. Um, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. And them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom, going out of his chamber and rejoiceth as a strong man to run the race. His going forth is from the end of heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. So the the creation gives testimony about God. But God's word, again, is uh, where we go to for the difficult questions, such as who is God? Who who are, uh, why are we here? Um... Why is there sin and death in the world? And most importantly, the Word of God reveals God's love for us and his plan to save us from our own sins, from our sins and our self-destruction. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 tells us, let's go to 1 Corinthians. I want you to begin reading with me in verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verse 10. But God, oh, let's start in verse 9, sorry. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. You know, that's the verse that I used to hear when I asked questions in church, and it wasn't in the quarterly. You know, my question wasn't in the little quarterly that they handed out for Sunday school, and it was, 
it took you know some more study or some and the question was always answered well there's some things we'll just never know until we go to heaven and then god will reveal all those things but that's not if you read verse 10 that's not what paul's saying here he's not saying you know there's things that we'll just never know about that we have uh, questions we have the answer uh, in verse 10 is but god hath revealed them unto us how by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man that is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The spiritual things of God's word. We compare verse, spiritual verse, with spiritual verse, and that's how we know the things, the deep things of God. Now, but verse 14, I wanted to make a point with verse 14. But the natural man, the unbeliever, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, the things in God's word, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So we can't expect to have a conversation with an unsaved person that's of a cult or a religion that doesn't believe that Lord Jesus Christ is God and that he died for their sins. We can't expl- expect that person to understand the, tri- the Trinity, uh, that uh, the deep things of God, until they have salvation the holy spirit and indwelling them that can take the spiritual words of this book and help them to discern or understand them when they compare verse with verse and learn the way we all have to learn by studying the scriptures so uh these things are revealed to us by god through his word uh i want to go now to first corinthians chapter two i'm sorry we're there uh romans chapter nine i'm sorry romans 10 verse 17 how about chapter 10 of romans verse 17 now the verse is so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god uh in second corinthians chapter 5 7 you don't have to turn there the passage says for we walk by faith not by sight don't we so faith cometh by hearing where do we get faith from from the word of god we walk by faith not by sight we don't expect to see all the things that confirm what we, the spiritual things we know from the scriptures, because a lot of the things that we learn from the scriptures can't be seen. We can't walk by sight and have the spiritual understanding that God wants us to have, that he only reveals to us in his word. God's an invisible God. We can't understand all things about him by sight. These are things we have to gain from the, the scriptures. Verse, uh, cha- or Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, now, faith is the substance. You're familiar with the, with the verse. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things, what? Not seen. So, the word of God is the evidence that God is a triune God and that he's one God yet existing in three persons. Um, now, I want you to, if you're there in, in Hebrews 11, uh, verse 3 says, through faith, that is, by the word of God, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So in Romans 1, the creation of the world, there are things that could be seen in creation. The invisible things of God could be understood, his eternal power and Godhead by the things that are made. But Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3 says that it's by the word of God, through faith, by the word of God, we understand things uh, so that we understand that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. They're made by God, the invisible God. Now, Genesis 1. Now, I wanted you to, I want you to, I want to just mention here as we go through these passages, I focused on passages that have to do with the creation, Genesis 1, verse 1, because the scriptures, when you study out the doctrines of the Godhead in the Bible, the the Trinity, uh, the three persons, one God, over and over the references are the creation. God refers to creation. Paul referenced creation. 
uh, as far as there's no one that has an excuse for not believing God if they, they can observe creation. They're without excuse. Um, Genesis 1.1 in Genesis 1-1, we read, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now, God there is Elohim, as the word translated God. Strong one is the definition. Strong one. Almighty. Masculine. It's a reference to God being masculine. So, you know, there's, there's no question in in the language of the Hebrew, when the references to Jehovah and God are references to God being masculine. And in the beginning, God, the passage says, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh, verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and so forth in the passage. So here is a reference to God, the strong one, the almighty, the masculine God, that says, let us make man in our image. Now, God is, if you were, talking with himself. It's not God talking with himself. It's God talking with himself. God is one God, yet in three persons. And so we'll see that if, if you look at the verses and see how what they say, there's no confusion about the fact that God is one God, yet in three persons. Uh, in the Old Testament, again, many passages that reinforce this. Look in uh, chapter 3 of, verse, of Genesis, verse 22. Chapter 3, 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil, and so forth. Now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever, and Adam and Eve get evicted out of uh, out of uh, the garden of eden now let us uh the man has become as one of us man is created in let us make man in our image now there's a lot that could be said what is what does that mean you know is it the masculine god is making adam after his masculine image uh or is it the shape of a human you know the shape of a human is the shape of god and and we think that the, the verse means, in, in our image, God is three persons, and we also have three natures. And we, are, we have a body of flesh. Uh, the scriptures say that we're spirit, soul, and body. Uh, our spiritual nature is what makes us uniquely able to communicate with God. And for God to communicate, you know, God reveals things to us by his spirit, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Um, so... That's the sense that we're created in the image of God. We have a spiritual nature, a soul, our ego, who we are. Those natures leave our body when we die. Uh, so we are created in the image of God in that sense, three natures. Uh, testimony, again, to the, to the triune nature of God. Uh, but chapter, uh, let's go to chapter 11 now. Another verse, another reference. Here, we're, we're just in the book of Genesis, the opening chapters of Genesis. Chapter 11 now, verse 6. Genesis eleven six, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they, all, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do, and now nothing can be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So again, let us go down. Now it says, starting verse 5, um, well, um, look at uh, verse 6. Notice 5 and 6, the word Lord is all caps, that's Jehovah. So who is speaking? 
more than likely, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. In my, in, in my understanding, it's Christ speaking in these passages. Let us make man in our image. That's my opinion. I can't prove that to you. You know, it's the Godhead. If, if one member of the Godhead speaks, their God is speaking. It's Jehovah speaking in any sense that you would refer to any of the three persons of the Godhead. So, again, uh, we'll see that more as, as we continue. Um, so, the first book of the Bible, strong case is made for God being three persons. Um, and a strong case being made for God is one God. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 48, this is a strong uh, passage in the Old Testament for God being a trinity. Uh, Isaiah 48, verse 16. So I didn't start the timer, Richard. So can you give me a time? Okay, 9.45, okay. Um, Isaiah 48, verse 16. Come ye near unto me, hear ye this, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was said, there am I, and now the Lord God in his spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way, that thou shouldest go. Who's speaking in the passage? It would be the Redeemer, which would be God the Son, the second person of the Godhead. And thus saith the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, that's Jehovah. Uh, so there, there's, there's a, abundant evidence. We don't have time to cover all the verses in the Old Testament even. But in the New and Old Testament, to the triune nature of God, um, and here... Uh, I want you to go to Proverbs 30. So that is a reference to the Redeemer. And there being reference to the Lord God and his spirit, the other members of the Godhead, sending him. Um, Proverbs 30. There are many more verses that support that the Lord Jesus Christ is the person, the Godhead, who created than there are the other members of the Godhead. But here's a verse, chapter 30 of Proverbs, verse 4 and 5. Who has sent it up into heaven or hath descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? So God the Father created, uh, according to that passage. Uh, go to Psalm chapter 104. Um, we already read Genesis 1-2, and the Spirit of God moved on the face of the waters in the creation. So that's God the Holy Spirit. Uh, but uh, Psalm 104-30 is a reference to the Holy Spirit being the creator. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. So all persons of the Godhead speak in the Bible. All persons of the Godhead manifest themselves. Uh, we know God the Father saying in, in John uh, chapter, or Matthew chapter 3, This is beloved, my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Father speaks, uh, but God the Holy Spirit uh, says in Acts chapter 13, verse 2, Separate unto me Barnabas and Saul for the work that I prepared for them to do god the holy spirit speaks so each person of the godhead speaks each person of the godhead acts each person of the godhead is uh, fully god and a member of the godhead now god the son in the old testament in isaiah chapter 44 uh, verse 24 uh, uh, the verse says thus saith the lord thy redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone and spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Again, capital L-O-R-D. Why is that important? If you're talking to someone who 
doesn't believe in the Trinity that is a Jehovah Witness, there are plenty of verses that capital L-O-R-D can only be God the Son, the second person of the Godhead that you can use. However, if they're not saved, are they going to be able to discern that? Are they going to, you know, so the more important thing, again, is to, to deal with that person about salvation. Now, the promised Messiah is both Jesus and God, the Jehovah, who makes all things. Uh, go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, and we're going to have to wrap up in a few minutes here. Ephesians 3, <clears throat> verse 8. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ, God, the whole, all three members of the Godhead created. But the scriptures glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, giving him the credit for being God the creator. And we know consistently throughout the word of God that God the Father exalts the Son. God the Holy Spirit exalts the Son. Uh, of course, God the Son exalts the Father and God the Holy Spirit. If any one of them speaks, um, they're all speaking in the sense through that member of the Godhead. Um, they're one in purpose. They're in perfect unity uh, in the things that they do. Uh, but the Word of God reveals that Jesus Christ uh, is, is Jehovah who made all things. And most, most of the glory is given to him uh, regarding the creation of the world in the, in the Word of God. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 1 is a passage that's very clear about the Lord Jesus Christ being God and being the creator. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Uh, you remember in Genesis 1-3, and God said, let there be light. Um, the, the light here, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is referred to as the light and as the word. Uh, go to uh, verse 14, John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Verse 18, no man has seen the seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So the Lord Jesus Christ is the member of the Godhead that the Godhead has revealed themselves through in his image. Uh, and uh, Des is going to talk more about that. I won't go into that, but there, uh, there are plenty of references in the Bible about that. Uh, so um, I want you to go and couple minutes we have left. Go to John chapter 8. Now, in John 8, we know that the scribes, Pharisees, the elders, they gave the Lord Jesus Christ a hard time about declaring himself to be God the Son, the Son of God. And so they tried to challenge him and trick him, and they tried to trap him in his statements, and they end up crucifying him on that basis that he declares himself to be God. And, uh, but in this passage, uh, I want you to look in, in verse 12 of John 8. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. He shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go, but you cannot tell whence I came and whither I go. Uh, look at verse 16. <clears throat> and yet if I judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. Uh, look at verse 18 or 17. 
I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father has sent me, beareth witness of me. The Father that sent me beareth witness of me. And they said unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my Father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. Why should they have known the Father whenever he came? He came, all the scriptures uh, foretold his coming and prophesied what his credentials would be. That he uh, made the lame able to walk, that he made the blind able to see, the deaf able to hear, raise the dead. These were all credentials that he is their Messiah, God the Son. And the scriptures say that he is a member of the triune God. When he came fulfilling all those prophecies about him, they should have seen him, the Father in him. But they should have seen the Father in the light of God's word about him. What the problem was is they did not believe the scriptures about who God is. They didn't believe their Old Testament Bible. They claimed to be the only word of God if you talk to an Orthodox Jew, a person who believes that uh, doesn't believe in the New Testament. There's ample evidence in the Old Testament that God is the triune God. And they should have believed not only the Lord Jesus Christ is God, but they should have also uh, believed in the Father. They should have known the, uh, the Father was in him when they saw him. Uh, now, there's, there's plenty of scriptures. We're at a time. But in Matthew uh, chapter 22, verse 29, it says, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. Have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God? And, you know, um, there, there's abundant evidence in the scriptures that God is. And we, we just scratch the surface of the passages that there are to show us and demonstrate that God is one God in three persons. Uh, there was, there's a song that you're familiar with, um, Holy, Holy, Holy. Um, that, that's a, a hymn that we don't sing as much as we probably should. The, the first verse is, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, Holy, Holy merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed trinity. Uh, the song is packed with doctrine. Second verse, though the eye of sinful man, or through the eye of sinful man, thy glory may not see, perfect in power, in love, and in purity. And it's interesting that there, there are two passages, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, and I'll read them. We're going to close with this. And Revelation 4, 8, Isaiah 6, 3 and one cried unto another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And, and in the book of Revelation 4, verse 8, uh, you know, they fall down, they're worshiping. And uh, the, uh, the four beasts had six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. The holy, holy, holy is a reference to his triune nature. Uh, it's not just holy as God. It's holy, holy, holy God. And uh, appreciate you uh, let me speak for you this morning. I'd like to close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your perfect word that it reveals who you are to us, that we can truly know you uh, through, the, through the testimony of your word that they give great support to the fact that, that you are one God in three persons. We thank you for these things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.